you can be the most religious or the most perfect sinless person but if you're not if you don't have the self-discipline to apply what you are supposed to do then you become like this just person that just fills space i i love the fact when people serve and, and people go out and, and you know are sending these care packages into ukraine right now and before that it was you know africa and mexico and everywhere else where they want to serve because that's their expression right but i was asking the question like i was like okay so what about all the people who stay home like what about the people who can't afford to fly to africa to ukraine to to mexico like what about them like why couldn't we engage them because we have our own crisis at home because if we show them not just tell them if we show them that we love them if we show them that we love them by by being there by caring then there's a, there's an open door figuratively and literally speaking and and all of a sudden it's like why do you do what you do jesus loves you that's why and, and, and so Thank you, Andre, for being here. It's really good to have you. Uh, how's how's your day so far? Thanks for having me. It's an absolute privilege. It always is. You I, are, you're I staying busy, you. like always. There's a lot happening, and there's a lot to talk about today. Absolutely. I'm excited to share. Absolutely. Well, we'll get into it just a minute here. I just wanted to uh, take a moment for folks who might not know who we are. Uh, so we started with registrations. Second was education and then activation. And I think today's uh, program is going to be probably heavily on the activation part, That's trying right. to get the Slavics... <laughs> Kind of off the bench right and and andre uh, is really good about that i think he's one of the most active guys i know in the, in our area and he does a lot of good work so i really appreciate him we had him on uh i, I believe it was june 13th we just checked so if you haven't yeah. if you want to learn more about andre and maybe uh english is not your your best language uh we had a russian program with him just uh, uh last year uh june 13th i believe you can find that on our youtube channel and all of our other programs that you can uh, that you, if you want to catch up on all of our programming you can find that on our youtube channel on our library uh on our website as well and a podcast format as well so that's all available uh on our website you can find all those links and like i said youtube is uh also on there so uh one thing i wanted to just mention really quick we just had a special election in washington that was really really important i hope most of you vo have voted um if you have not voted what that means is you are most likely not registered uh if you were expecting a ballot uh so one thing I would recommend is uh, just go on our website. Uh, you can find a registration link where you can register to vote right on our website. Uh, you can also go directly to the Secretary of State website and register to vote. Uh, make sure you are registered uh, also correctly, if, especially if you live in Oregon. Um, we had a few programs in the past. We talked about the importance of being correctly registered. And just briefly, what that means is you have to make sure you are registered with uh, one of the two major parties in Oregon. Otherwise, you won't be able to participate in all the elections. So. Make sure you um, you are correctly registered, either Republican or Democrat. Uh, we don't tell people who to vote for or how to vote, uh, so it's, that's up to you. But most importantly is that you are registered and you are actively voting every election. Because don't forget, there is an election every year, uh, once or twice, and uh, this year is uh, one of the most uh, important ones. And we'll talk about that as well towards the end after um, we uh, talk a little bit about Flash Love and what Andre is doing this year as well. Um, so thank you for tuning in. Uh, one thing I also wanted to remind, you know, the two elections that are coming up in Oregon and Washington is the primary elections for the governor and the primary primary elections uh, for just in Washington general elections. So you're going to see those dates. That's a, it's going to be in May for Oregon and August for Washington. Uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, make sure, again, you're registered and make sure you are ready to vote when it comes to that. And you can find resources um, uh, to make that process easier on our website as well or just by reaching out directly to us. So we're always happy to hear talk. For those folks who might not know who you are, uh, if you can do a quick uh, introduction of, uh, of just, I guess, your story, uh, how you got involved, uh, when did you move here, and where you, where you move, and just uh, your passion for uh, for the city. Yeah, so <clears throat> I guess uh, a little bit about myself. Um, first and foremost, uh, thank you again for, for the opportunity to be here. Um, I also want to commend you guys uh, for your incredible work. You guys have given a voice to so many people. Um, many people will sit and complain when something hurts, but so few actually go to do something about it. And it's not that people don't want to, it's where do you begin, right? And so it takes the, 
the the ones the dedicated ones who go up, go in dig up the work create the logistical plan and then give people that opportunity to you know to be involved and and uh, cast their vote and actually be be start making change so i appreciate you guys and just being in the midst of doers and i know that you are the face there's so much more yes. so many more people yeah. behind you that you represent and uh um, I honor all of you for for your work. Well, it's it's our honor to be that voice because it's yeah. uh, it's hard to do this work, and the fact that people are being supportive and coming out and and uh, just giving us that platform, uh, we appreciate, and we couldn't have done it without it. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. So, uh, a little bit about myself. Um, I was born in Kiev, Ukraine, um, back in 1984, and uh, we immigrated to the United States in late 1990 um, from a family of 13. I was, oh, how old am I? Yeah, how old were you back then when uh, you moved? Five and a half. Five and a half. Do yeah. you remember much of Ukraine? I do, because I actually went back for my cousin's okay. wedding in 2013 when my Don was actually uh, getting started. Awesome. And we saw the protest. We didn't know at the time what it was going to, you know, evolve into. But anyway, so yeah, we came to the United States, uh, one of 13 um, kids in the family, um, one of eight boys, and I have five sisters as well. So kind of fast forward, you know, to to me coming to a realization of of who I was, because for a long time, like like many people, you get sold this American dream. And it's like it means different to, you know, to every people. But some people can describe it as having that little house with a white picket fence, you know, and yeah. so there's some variation of that for everybody. And and so I was sold that same dream, working hard, trying to make myself in this world. Um, and then there was a shift in my life. And when God touched my heart, and I, I frequently share my story this way, when God touched my life, I began to question who I was and why was I in this world? Why was I taking up space if I wasn't contributing to the suffering that I began to see? Because I, I started praying to God and, and, and asking Him to open my eyes and, and burn my heart for the things that burnt His because I would see the things, but I would often just kind of shrug it off and be like, well, what, what's that to me? When, when I would see a family that would fall apart or a father would, would pass away and then this mother's like struggling, suffering, you know, not knowing where to even go, where to, be, where to begin. So things like that became, became a concern to me. Um, for a long time, I was also passive towards that because it's like, okay, what do you do? And you just move on, right? Go about your business. Um, but as I began to pray that prayer, God not only burned my heart deeper to where I just stayed glued to praying into the solution that we'll talk about today. And, the, and, and my goodness, is that solution like glorious, like it's beautiful. And, and um, it, this is just a manifestation of, of pressing into something and, and that is worth fighting for. For sure. And when, what year was that turning point for you? Um, that was my 27th year in my life, and uh, shortly after, which was 2013, which, uh, like, literally within, within that same time frame, within that month, is when we actually uh, formed uh, into what we are today. Uh, that's where it, it began. So my six of, of my seven brothers and a group of uh, five friends uh, put together Flash Love. So I'm just one of the co-founders. I'm not the right. uh, founder of it. That's awesome. Was there, yes. a, was there a specific trigger that happened in your life that you might want to share sharing briefly? If, um, it, if it's worth yeah yeah it, it, it is very worth it because I think a lot of people will, will relate to it I mean especially and again in a time like this it, anxiety was in, at an all time high from the outside you, you know you could look into my life and I was I was single uh, young successful and you know finished the school like um, was working and getting promoted at my job and just just everything seemed to look great driving the car that I think everybody else would have approved of right all those things you know working towards you know getting married and all the all the other stuff but inside I was just crumbling from just anxiety wow. and it's not that I could even point to any one thing of what was causing it other than I always felt like I wasn't doing enough mm. I always felt like I was just running up this hill that wasn't worth running up because because in the end I couldn't even see what what would be the outcome other than I would gain whatever promotion or whatever other title that that we often so often strive for and so as I began to like like I had a breaking point where I was like God like who what in the world am I who who am I why am I here and as I as I as I you know turned to that prayer 
things began to undo. But it started with God just removed this anxiety within an instant. Like it wow. literally went. And I don't remember if it happened right in that prayer or shortly after. But it was a short time of, of when that happened. And it was like this weight that fell off and I could begin to breathe again. You know, anxiety just like buries you. Um, I wasn't on any medications that people often get on and, you know, through depression and all that. I can't say I was depressed, but it was just, just a weight. And when that was lifted, when God touched my heart in that way, it began to manifest into into something that that became not only productive for for me. I just I I had a new vision and things that I used to just really get excited about and dream about. I they started coming back, and and I started to to go more direct into uh, again what what we are today. Yeah, it's really interesting because um, we know that you're Slavic. You said that you're from uh, Kiev, Ukraine, and the Slavic community in itself is a pretty sheltered community. Uh, so it's interesting that only you know twenty years later we're realizing that there are certain cracks, and even in the Slavic community, you know, there's drug abuse, there's alcohol abuse. Um, when we first met your organization. Uh, you were mainly doing. You were mainly working with uh, the community that you live in, which would be Americans, Slavics. I know you're from Vancouver area or Clark County area, um, but it, it sounds like you were working for just the location that you were living in. You know, trying to kind of go from not going to some other country to do missionary work, which is promoted by the Slavic community a lot, especially if you go to church and. Uh, religious organizations, you know, they promote, you know, go to, you know, Mexico or go to there. You decided to actually do it here at home. Um, we're a pretty young organization. We're three years old, <laughs> a lot younger. Um, how did the first days of this organization look for you? Because for us, I remember we all get together in a big room and there we met people we just got together I, I think i knew probably like four or five people from the group and everybody else was just strangers from other churches from mm -hmm. other places that's how we met lily that's the first time we saw her oh. how did that look like for you and your organization what was the first couple days like i like i'm, I'm gonna answer the the, <laughs> the, the the question you didn't ask but okay. brought up yeah. the point and that is um i like that you that, that you did I, I love the fact when people serve and, and people go out and, and you know s are sending these care packages into Ukraine right now and before that it was you know Africa and Mexico and everywhere else where they want to serve because that's their expression right a lot of times it's just you know where do you even begin so people just like oh I know that so I'm going to do that so someone is spearheading heading it in the in the church or other organization and people just follow yeah. but I was asking the question like I was like okay so what about all the people who stay home. Like, what about the people who can't afford to fly to Africa, to Ukraine, to to Mexico? Like, what about yeah. them? W w like, why couldn't we engage them? Because we have our own crisis at home. We have our own people to reach at home. And so that was the big part. I was like, what if we just tap into these these uh, Slavic churches and, and mobilize the youth who s say they want to serve? Like, let's get out and just, like, love on our neighbor in the simplest way and make it happen. So that was one of the points that we discussed uh, and, and uh, responded in, in that way. Um, but yeah, when we got together, I mean, it was also, it was such a buzz. Like people just, we, we would actually, Facebook was just becoming a thing. It wasn't even a thing then, but it was there. MySpace. And, right. <laughs> and so we, um, we just threw a yeah. word of mouth and, you know, initially, and then also utilizing Facebook, we just went out and just started talking about it. Right. And, and people just showed up, um, in large numbers. I mean, there was so much excitement that, that you could just be active and, and be the light, be Christ. Uh, to the community in a very tangible way. I mean, it went from like, you know, yard cleanups to where we're touching people's hearts in, in a simple way, but we're able to talk to them and just like love on them where they're like, what church are you from? Well, like 28 churches at least are represented <laughs> in this group. I don't know, like which one do you yeah. give the credit to, right? So yeah. it's simple. Yeah, it's very simple, but but that, that excitement was real. I mean, I remember like after the events, I mean, they, people just didn't want to leave. They were like, okay, so what's next? You know, it was like, I don't know. I've never been here, and, and we're not. We're, we weren't a nonprofit. We've never done that. I I uh, wasn't uh, fond of public speaking, and so I was just tripping on myself, like trying to like stay calm as as I am sharing, you know, the the heart, the 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 passion, the vision, you know, and and uh, 
yeah, the, the buzz was also very, very much there. And uh, it, it never really died. It would fade from time to time as we would, you know, make adjustments in direction, but is, is, is hotter and brighter today than it's ever been. That's awesome. Yeah, I love the, the, the example that you made of, uh, you know, the, we have plenty of crises here in, in our country, in our state, in our local areas. And uh, I think it's important to have folks who can have can find a place where they can go out and serve yeah. in a local area. So I, I love that you have that. I, I, I guess I've I've never personally uh, went to any missionary work, um, and I found I found local work is probably you know, uh, United States is one of the most generous countries, uh, one of the most um, uh, countries that serve uh, most most people most countries. So I feel like by saving this country or by making this country stronger uh we could really help the, the entire nation or the entire other countries a lot more yeah. by preserving this country first of all and then making it stronger from within so so i love that i love that well uh, so the you guys have been really busy lately doing some some incredible work um i, I guess sometimes when i look at your guys work I, there, is there two organizations or two separate like missions or one main mission. Uh, could you talk about that a little bit? Because there seems like there's two, maybe, uh, I guess, missions. Or what, what, what can you tell about that? So the mission is the same. Yeah. We are here to make disciples. Right. We are here to bring hope to the city, uh, you know, to the to the cities, to the regions, and to this nation. Like, what we're here for is to rebuild the family. Mm-hmm. I said all those things, but they're all one thing. Right. It's go out and make disciples from your neighbor. From your, you know, that friend at school, that that guy at work, what do you, what does that mean to make a disciple? Like let let's let's just touch on that for a second. It's when someone sees your life and they question why you do what you do and what is your drive, like what is the motivation behind what you do. When people when people have nothing to display in their life, they're still making disciples in such a way. Like people are like I mean when I say disciples, I mean like sometimes people like look at you and they're like, oh okay, that's that's not something I would follow. So you're getting people, you know, like you're pushing people but away from you. But if you're doing something that is, that is selfless, that is, that is worth, that is worth even for an unbeliever to ask a question because they, they may not be able to use your words that you, that you speak, um, biblical terms or whatever, but they're like, who are you? Why do you do what you do? Because that I can connect with. That's a relational thing. And so Christ was very relational. So for us, again, it's, we make disciples because when you make disciples, you have the permission to speak into someone's life in a very simple and tangible way. But it starts with, let's care about you. Let's, 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 let's have this conversation and, um, and we're already serving in this neighborhood and so on. And we'll go into that, um, I'm sure, in the next few minutes as well. For sure. Yeah. I, I just saw kind of, because um, I think uh, I first kind of got onto you guys' social media right as Slavic Vote started because we were looking for organizations to kind of partner with and connect with. And um, I saw kind of like an evolution in Flash Love too because um, you guys went from, you know, taking like, what was it, like 2,000 kids or something downtown Portland and just uh, swamping the whole place and cleaning it up. And this is pre-pandemic, by the way. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, just doing stuff in the community. And then Mm -hmm. I think we attended one of the outdoor services in Vancouver uh, which I've never seen before um, done in public in that manner. Um, and then now you're kind of like honing in specifically on individuals, uh, seeing the crisis that we have, like sort of kind of maybe what you went through, maybe not to the same degree with, you know, teens not having goals, teens just not having a purpose mm-hmm. and just kind of like wandering around. Um, I actually ended up being in a meeting where uh you brought in a police officer i think he's running for a position right now in vancouver um and ray Ray reynolds right? yeah ray reynolds and he just uh, at your meeting and he just opened up my eyes i'm like wow you know that's why they're putting up those fences along you know 205 bridge it's not so people wouldn't throw trash out it's because people were jumping off bridges you know young kids would just you know commit suicide and it's just it kind of opened up my eyes to what's really happening in the community because again the slavic community is very sheltered so if it doesn't happen in the slavic community we usually don't hear about it you know or we don't pay as much attention to it yeah um so it took us a while i like the word that you use uh hone in it took us a while to hone in to really understand where what area for one can we can we be can we plan 
but then also where can we be most useful and and effective to bring the greatest change uh, in, into our community, you know, and into our nation, and then to answer. Uh, uh, Dima's point as well, like, what are we? Like, is it, are we this thing or are we, are we this other thing? We're running multiple lanes. And I'll actually explain that if, if I have your permission. Stop me at any time oh, to no. ask a question uh, as, <laughs> as I go. So if we're here to make disciples and we now know, like, who we are, like, and where we're going, there's a lot of pieces. There's a lot of pieces that will fall into this, but I will brief us pretty quick i won't i'll try not to go into too much detail in each one so what we begin with is uh we started with uh as of a year and a half ago this uh training program called uh, the spartan challenge and it's really just to connect with boys it's to connect with boys and get them to take a challenge because as i've said you know earlier today nobody wants to be weak nobody wants to be useless nobody wants to be living this life breathing air and just have no purpose no direction how do you get how do you equip you know someone who's in that space like you hear the the message at church all day long every you know every sunday you're out you're, you're listening okay so this is who we are here's kind of like what what christ was we should follow that okay cool how where, do, where does that apply to me so you can be the most religious or the most perfect sinless person but if you're not if you don't have the self-discipline to apply what you are supposed to do meaning love your neighbor and do all the right things, lead others to Christ, be the disciple maker. If you don't have the discipline, then you become like this just person that just fills space. So it's the discipline. I mean, let me give you an example. When, when, when the disciples were in the Garden of Gethsemane and Jesus said, like, your spirit wills, right? But your body, your, your, your body is weak, right? You're, and, so, and so your physical strength is weak or something. I, I, um, I'm paraphrasing. So he, even Jesus, you know, marked on the point that you can want and wish all you want to do the right things, but if you don't have the discipline, then there's always going to be a fail, a fall in, in your life, and you're not going to do what, what is necessary. So what we start with is the Spartan Challenge, which challenges these young boys to go in and through a rigorous boot camp-like um, training, this, this uh, 10-week course that we take him through, um, it is Christ-centered. But boy, does it have discipline around, like everything's stacked around it to where we give them the, the ability to really just get hardened, um, first ground into powder and then, and then rebuilt and hardened in a way to where they can be useful in their personal lives, to where they can be useful in their family, to where they can be useful in their community and one day make their own family. Nobody desires a man who is just absolutely weak and cannot stand on his own if he cannot carry out the task that he knows he needs to carry out. So, th so through that training, we teach him also very valuable skills. Like we, you know, send him through a self-defense, uh, like one of the courses is self-defense, then vehicle maintenance. Um, they go through a culinary course. I'm talking to you moms right now. Um, <laughs> they, go, they go through uh, um, a uh, combat life-saving, which means like they, they, they actually know how to utilize the medical equipment in a kit to be able to respond in, in a crisis situation, bandage someone up, you know, use a tourniquet and properly apply it and so on. So all these things that, we, that, that are good in the military, because my staff is military, um, we introduce it and teach these young men what, how they can be more effective and more, more useful, again, in, the, in their home and in their community as they go. So that's the beginning. That's, that's stage one. When they graduate, they move into what we place them into teams where there is a there is a leadership structure where one leads another three so we we select the ones who are more mature who are more capable and we simply place them it's not only age right it's also just their drive and how they were raised right some are stronger some are you know, others others are not so so um once they once they get into that, so we, we, we give them an ability to then lead others. And so we, we, we begin introducing, as they're now in teams, we continue um, this accountability process. So we're teaching them good habits that they're applying because every evening they're, they're checking in. Hey, everything's all right? Um, and, uh, you know, th this is where I'm at. Here's what my numbers are at, right? So, I mean, because we're having them also, you know, uh, physically exercise. Um, we, have, we have them listening to podcasts. You know, they're, they're growing in leadership. And developing but what that does is it gives us an ability to then move them into the community so every single week for in for about two hours on a saturday 
um, they go out and they serve in the community. This is like step three. So, or I, well, I guess whichever way you count it from, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll call it step two. So they go into the community and they're now, they're now taking back territory. What do I mean by taking back? There are so many people that are, that are um, afraid. They watch the news. They just, they're, they're eating this and they live in this fear and, ex- and anxiety. Yeah. Um, how, do you, how do you change that? Like, how do you bring Christ into a home that is so disconnected? They don't even go out. Like some people's doors like that we knock on, like they haven't been out for months. Food shows up and that's just wow. it. It's, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's heartbreaking. <laughs> They get a knock on the door and they simply get an introduction. Hi, my name is, right? It starts with, hi, my name is. And here's what we're doing in your neighborhood. So we're going out. You know, like a lot of people will drive around. They're like, oh my gosh, all this graffiti, gross. Um, the trash on the streets, gross, right? Um, look at that disastrous yard. And they just kind of drive you know, past it and then, and then move on to the next topic that, that they happen to have. Our youth are taking back one neighborhood after another. So while they're out there serving that, that, that neighborhood, they're introducing themselves. That's, that's kind of step one. They're introducing themselves to every home. They're knocking on every single dorm, uh, home. Um, not every single person opens, right? But we're making significant progress. They're knocking on the doors, introducing themselves. They're picking up the trash while they're working in, in those streets. And again, this happens rather quickly. Like when I said two hours, like that's what we're there on site. If somebody doesn't pick up the door do you, or pick up the, open the door, do you still... Clean well, up. Knowing neighbors, we're cleaning the streets, not like oh, their yard. Right. We're cleaning the streets, okay, but yeah, we're yeah. In, letting them know what we're doing. So the second thing is we're cleaning the streets. So they're walking with with uh, um, with uh, trash bags and doing that. And I know we you also lawn the the mow the lawn, right? We do Sometimes. that, and I'll I'll, I'll get to Different, that in just okay. a second. Yeah. So so the next thing we do is we we uh, identify where the graffiti is at, and then we come back, and then we actually remove that. So if it's on a you know private property. Um, then, then it is something that we'll discuss, you know, with the owner of the private property. If it's on public, you know, it's kind of fair game. It's it's ours, and so we remove it, right? And so, and so the step four is when we see a neglected or abandoned yard, we find out the reason why. Like, is it an elderly person that's there? Is that is it a mom that's like falling on hard times, like, and she's in a crisis mode herself? We want to know why. And a lot of times, what happens is while we're finding out what's going on in that home, or even by knocking on doors, people are saying saying thank you for for caring thank you for being here and then they begin to open up and pretty soon you know like there's there's a actual food need in the house so we have partners where we can deliver them a, a food bag right and connect them to where they can receive that kind of assistance but we are there right a lot of times, you know, we'll have conversations where, like, well, they, where they're just like open up and just like share totally irrelevant things. But again, to them, it's very relevant. Like that's what they're living, right? And so, so our stronger, you know, volunteers, like they're out there praying, right? They're out, they're out, really just evangelizing, right? Now you have an open door to just like love on people. Um, so, so all of those other things that I just mentioned, you know, the, the, the cleaning, the trash, the, the removing graffiti, the, the responding to the need around, around a neglected yard, all of them are, are there to really validate and reinforce why we're, re- why we're really there and we're there for a relationship. Because if we show them, not just tell them, if we show them that we love them, mm-hmm. if we show them that we love them by, by being there, by caring, then, then what happens is th- there's, an op- there's, an, there's, a, there's an open door figuratively and literally speaking and and all of a sudden it's like why do you do what you do jesus loves you that's why and 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 so we were able to we're able to sow into that heart and give him an opportunity to see the church in a very active way so so that's that's a significant you know a component to what we do so um yeah that allows them to to pour out then we kind of go into next level um as they continue to progress um through through leadership right as we're as we're elevating and, and, and educating them, we have boys who are uh, qualifying to learn how to build timber frame homes. For anybody that does not know what a timber frame home is, it's a slightly different type of a construction. Um, it's uh, homes that get built out of larger beams and posts because we have a burnt down forest in in Oregon that you know a burnt down mismanaged forest, may I say, um, and so the trees burned up and then they got cut down and left out to rot. We take those trees and run them through our sawmills, turn them into, into good, um, very, very valuable lumber, and then we teach our boys how to build homes with them. And as they are learning the trade, as they're learning this valuable skill, 
we are they're working off their like they're working hours that we document and then as they complete the hours they receive their own home this is a small like a like a tiny tiny home right a cabin mm -hmm. that they can place into their parents backyard they can sell it and may, you know uh, earn a down payment for themselves or or they can they can uh, you know Airbnb it um, on a property that we actually provide for leaders because we are building out these little micro communities for for uh, the next phase that I'll talk to you about going forward but what we're doing is we're holistically creating an opportunity for our young men to not be you know thinking about you know those you know hot and, hot and flashy cars until they're you know 26 years old thinking that this is what ladies want like let's teach him how to be a responsible human being at 16 years old so by 18 he gets to move out of his house and he has a house to live in like he can actually provide for his family and by the way he now has a house that's paid off. It may not be big, but it's paid off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he now gets to focus on other more important things, which is not bills, right? right. So it sets him up for life, and it, and it really just just challenges his mind to to uh, think differently. I love that. What's yeah. the process of, I guess, signing up, or what's the best way to get on your guys' you know, your, your program? So the best way, thanks for asking that, uh, by the way. Uh, the best way would be through our social media. Um, Contact me and sign up through the uh, to this training, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that would be through our website. So any any of the social media messages mm -hmm. or or through the website, um, and then we have uh, sign up forms uh, on there. Um, but you know, you were talking about the the whole culinary component. Like people don't even realize the, the the significance of it. So many people have no idea how to how to prepare themselves a basic healthy meal, and so that's really what we focus on is how to create like a, a basic healthy meal. Because one of the things that the leaders have to do is they actually have to invite their team to their house mm. and they provide food for them, like they cook for them, right? So we teach them how to make a breakfast under 15 bucks for six guys, right? For four guys. And so it really just kind of opens their mind to the reality that, you know, mom isn't the, no, the only solution, nor is McDonald's. Yeah. So like, let's, let's really like take this a different level. And it, and it gives them confidence. Like you wouldn't be, you wouldn't. Uh, I, I guess you'd be surprised to see like how many guys get, get so excited you know, after they've cooked their meal and they get to sit down and eat it, like how simple it was and they actually prepared it. Like they, right. it gives them a, you know, a sense of confidence as well just in that space alone. So I, I know there's... I want to take a moment to thank all of our sponsors for allowing us to be here on this program and all of our future programs. Some of the sponsors are Pilmeni Pilmeni, Nina Martina, a real estate broker, America's Best Realty, Exceptional Homes, Dreamhouse Construction, Imperial Cabinets, Solution 8020, Gold Cup Coffee House, Red Hills Construction, Sibironi, Lanos Floral, Third House Media, and some others. Without these companies, without these organizations, we couldn't be on this program. And if you would like to be our next sponsor, reach out to us by visiting slavicvote.org. We would love to partner with you and further our mission. Thank you very much. I know there's probably more than a few moms and dads that are that have kids um, that are sitting at home gaming, or well, that's the popular thing to say these days. Mm -hmm. um, what are the requirements, or if, there, if any, uh, are there to get um, these teens? We, we were talking a little bit before the program, I and mean, you mentioned that your class sizes are about 70, graduation classes are about 70 people. That's what you guys are finding is the best number. Um, how, how does that happen? Um, do they go on the website, register? Is there an age requirement? Um, yeah, good question. So the age requirement is uh, 13 to 21. We haven't had someone apply that, that's older at, mm -hmm. at this time, but, but we've had many people who are interested that were older. Um, but we say 13 to 21 because, well, we, we needed to you know, draw the line somewhere. We do give um, some break to a, a bigger, more mature 12-year-old. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so we do have some exceptions, but that's the age uh, range. Um, signing up again, they, they'll, if they'll send us a message through, through the, uh, the social media pages, mm -hmm. um, just direct message, we can send them the link that way. Or if they go on the website, they can uh, just find the link and then apply directly to the Spartan challenge. Um, that's for boys 
for for girls the class is already full uh because we're doing a trial run for girls this I this heard about cycle <laughs> and um we have over 20 that have signed up and, and and because this is a trial run we had to find enough committed female staff to actually lead it and then the guys would then train them the the very critical components so we're modifying it you know to girls they don't need the same kind of treatment as guys do um no eight mile runs <laughs> I think they can do it. Probably. No, that part they'll have, but but it just won't be as rigorous on the discipline side as as what guys need. Yeah. I mean, we have we start our classes. I mean, the the classes uh, leading up to this would start around fifty, and then we graduate around thirty four. Uh, last class, this one maybe about thirty two or so. So, but for the next class, we are expecting a much larger because we've we finally kind of went public with it um, in, in, a, in, a, in a greater way. We, we, we promote it a little bit more this time. So to sign up to be part of the program and to help out, that's also, that's both can be, uh, they can reach out through social media. Through social media would be the probably the best way. For a long time, it, it, it was a little bit tough. A lot of people do want to help. It took us a while to develop, you know, kind of what we're doing. And, and to the people who are like surprised, wondering, okay, so what really are you? Are you, are you a home building uh, uh, organization mm-hmm. or or you know, are you training youth? Well, we're training youth to become to become leaders in a community. But how do you make them effective? How do you how do you not let them eat the same stuff that we ate? And by that I mean like the same the same kind of a kind of a feed where they just get sucked into this into this uh, you know employment world or whatever or even business world. And then yeah. forty years later, they're like, what like what did I do wrong that I'm still trying to keep my head above water so we really educate them in in uh, in, in a lot of very 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 critical uh ways i mean they'll they actually dive into the constitution so they they learn and understand that um in their leadership you know they they learn leadership we teach them how to how to uh, how to purchase a home but not just using you know the the uh current and existing systems so one of those things is they work towards a house to where they already have an asset right as a young 16 17 you know an 18 year old guy and then going forward so um yeah I'll, I'll so m- my that. second question is as a parent um i think other parents are probably gonna have questions too related to this so the entry point you said from uh 13 up to 21 mm-hmm. 20 um what are the costs for parents for example let's say they have a like a 13 or 14 year old son and they want to send them uh, maybe they have like three or four boys that are falling to that range. Yeah, the cost is uh, we have a recommended donation for uh, for the program per person at three hundred dollars. Um, it helps us cover our costs, you know, our building costs that we're looking to expand into a larger building because we're having we're struggling to fit them um, yeah. to keep them out, you know, out of the rain and and, and other things. So. Um, so three hundred dollars per person, and then and then when they get in, uh, there's a uh, three hundred and seven dollar uh, purchase list of gear that they that they keep. So they they buy their own gear, and uh, um, yeah, so that that would be okay. that would be the full cost. But we feed and them, we feed them, and then that covers the entire ten weeks. Got it. And how long is the program? Let's say from start to finish. Ten weeks. And what is the time commitment that? For example, for the boot, I'm talking about just just the just the boot camp. Yeah, that's uh, Saturdays from Saturdays. eight o'clock uh, in the so morning weeks. to, uh, 5 PM. So they're there, uh, for a night for nine hours. And then, and, and we provide lunch for them. Okay. Yeah. It sounds That'd like you're good. interested in, in uh, <laughs> signing up your kids. Yeah. You boys and girls for this. <laughs> That's it's, awesome. it's, well, it's, it's really, it's really connecting with a lot of moms. Yeah. I mean, I, I, if I just may, I just, yeah. I, I just want to share some stories, uh, about like what, what really happens, uh, the change that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, the parents, I will give credit for what the parents go through. I mean, I was in a, in a large home with, with, with children, but sometimes people are like, well, I have just one son or just two sons, and I'm having just a heck of a time raising you guys because they reach this age where I'm now, my influence is just like evaporated, and it's like whatever their you know peers are, are talking or what they're seeing on social media, that's kind of what just happens to be the flavor of the day, and it's like there's just, it creates chaos and, and other things that follow. Um, when they come into the training, like we see them melt down. I mean, there's some, there's some guys that will have, and I know I, I, this is not, not a way to promote, you know, an organization, Crying. but we have guys that will cry and, <laughs> and, uh, we, yeah, so, so it's, it's very tough. It's very difficult, but it really just presses you. And so you begin to really just question a lot of things and you begin, because what we're doing is we're pressing them to, to remove the individuality for that, for that training and really, and really begin to become a part of a team where you can't be selfish 
because you will stand out, right? And so that's just one of the things. And so as they go through the training um, and we're hearing reports from parents, con- you know, continuously where he, you know, sold his video games on week four. Hmm. He because it wasn't contributing to his mission. It wasn't it wasn't helping his mission. <laughs> he began to, you know, you know, to clean his bedroom um, because, again, nobody wants to be a slob. Nobody wants to be weak. And, and, and you want to be accountable. You want to be responsible, responsible and actually begin to value yourself and, and respect yourself differently. So we see uh, that kind of response and hear a lot of it from parents. We'll have some of the parents actually uh, sharing their testimonies um, at the graduation like we did last time. Did you find the best age range to have their attention the best? 14. 14? Yes. Do you, re- do you require them to be registered to vote as well? We educate them on civics. And, awesome. and that's, that's, that's part, of, <laughs> part of that, that continuous growth. And we help them understand that you are here for such a critical in, in such a critical time and, 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 and live in such a critical space. Um, and we help them understand their duties as a man. And so what that does is, again, it, it gives them a sense of, 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 of responsibility, of accountability. And, and they begin to see that, it, you know, like a lot of times, I mean, this is, I'm going into a, like a, a different direction right now, or, or, which seems um, boys are shamed to be boys. We, we rip that out that shame, that guilt, and we, we help them understand the significance just by explaining to them the significance of who you are, the fact that you have teeth and a backbone, like they're there for a reason. Now you just got to use them in the right place. Mm-hmm. You have to store them and use them as a tool, not let it wreck your life and, and, and live as a coward just swaying in the wind. And it really just connects to them. It really connects to them. And I, like I said, I just keep using this word, you know, uh, it gives them a sense of pride and confidence knowing that there's, they're not the only one because they're looking to the left and to the right, and there's others who are assuming this responsibility. So by the time that we are done with with the training, I mean, you really are looking at a different person in a, in a very in a very uh, beautiful way. Awesome, awesome. And uh, what's the best way for folks if they want to donate to you or uh, to contribute in the financially? What would be the best way to, for them to reach out? The website would probably be the the, best way. the simplest way. Yes. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, I know you guys are having a graduation coming up. Is that the uh, the ten month that you mentioned? That's yes. after the ten month graduation. It's class five. Yeah, can you talk a little bit? Can you talk a little bit about one. that? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Graduations are uh, are uh, like you want me to describe it a little bit. I'm taking uh, just a little or, briefly or just leading up to time, okay because yeah. that's coming up uh, yeah. here in the next few weeks. Yeah, that's so that's on March 19th. And this is your first or second? This group is the or? fifth. Uh, group, group, group that's that's awesome. graduating yeah and it's uh it's one of our uh, larger classes um and uh we're gearing up for a much bigger one but anyway yeah so in so uh this month on the 19th it'll be at 5 p.m uh if they go on on our social media we have we have uh the address and they can uh, get the tickets um we are not charging anybody um, we got a little bit more space this time. Uh, mm-hmm. Last time we were just maxed out and people were standing. Mm-hmm. So we had to uh, create a space that could hold at least uh, four or 500 this time. So oh. we'll see. But it continues to definitely grow. And, and it's a beautiful thing because to, to you men specifically, what I just want to say is your voice is so needed. And, and when, when the graduation is kind of coming to an end and these boys are, are coming off of the stage, we actually create, we call all men in the room and we have them build a tunnel and then we, we give them the, the commission to invite these, these boys into manhood because many of them, many of them do not have a father in their life. Um, and and they've, they've lived with this abandonment. And so what actually begins to happen is there's a healing that happens um, in their hearts and in their lives. Um, as they're walking through this tunnel and then, and then being welcomed by these 80 men, you know, who are, who are part of this, uh, welcome tunnel that we have them walk through. I love that. And I know you've been putting a lot of emphasis on men and, uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about that. Why do you think men, uh, are supposed to be strong in the, in, in our society? Uh, and I know we were having a, a tour that's coming up this year as well. And that's something we're going to talk a little bit of, uh, as well and, and, uh, have you join us, uh, and speak on that. But, um, why do you put such a big emphasis on boys and men and for them to be such a strong uh, person in the future? If that's, uh, well, that's a long, that's a long, I know it's no, a big question. Yeah, it, it is. Um, passive men wreck civilizations. Passive men who, who stand by and watch, um, watch evil happen and don't do anything about it, civilizations collapse because of them. 
And that's a huge, huge like stain and responsibility uh, that that men have to pick up. When society's good, it seems like oh someone else is going to pick that up. The government is going to take care of it. This organization is going to take care of it. But if each one of us as men do not stand in our own space and take the responsibility, for one, we feel useless. When we feel useless, we're gonna we're gonna busy our time, you know, with and 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 resources with all kinds of other distractions, mm-hmm. none of which are usually ever helpful. And so just taking ownership of your life and stop distracting yourself with everything and in, 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 to include the hobbies. If your family is struggling, if your family is suffering, like take it from, take it where you're at. And so that was, that was a big thing for me. The other thing is um, I'm a man, so I can connect with, I can connect with boys who I was and I can connect with men who, who I can speak into. And I tell all of the men around me to hold me accountable because I'm, I'm a human, right? I can fail. But if we begin to each hold each other accountable, then there's this new level of honor. There's this new level of, of integrity that we get to live up to because we become part of a community. And when we hold each other accountable, then our families become stronger. Then our community becomes stronger. Then, then our nation begins actually get, will finally be able to get up off of her knees. Because we have struggled because everybody, to some degree, has abandoned their post. Absolutely. Uh, Yarek, do you have anything else you wanted to ask before we start closing this program? Uh, no, I think, uh, I think Andre really covered it. Yeah. I, I do suggest people who, if they have kids, send them that way. For sure. It's, For sure. Uh, I mean, I, I know I was re- even reading an article a while back, and they did a small study in Israel because in Israel everybody's mandatory to go into military service, girls and boys. Mm-hmm. And just the the maturity level of the people at 18, 19, 20 is way above the world standard just because of that. Um, and you can usually tell if people have been to the military or not. Right. I haven't. So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm checking um, to see if anybody asked any questions on the social media because we oftentimes ask if any of our listeners. Uh, and speaking of questions, you can always call into our studio um, uh, by dialing 503-238-9000. And again, 503-238-9000. And so if you have any questions for Andre or one of us, you can call that today right now. Uh, and while we're... If we're gonna have any call, any questions while we're waiting on that, anything else you wanted to share? Uh, I know you mentioned a few things that you mentioned. That we can talk more about it in the few, you know, later in the program. So, what what else would you like to uh, talk about that relates to your mission or whatever mm-hmm. you, that's in your heart? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> gosh, I, I wish I had a lot of time. Yeah. I w- I really wish I had a lot of time, and and uh, thanks for allowing me. Um, what I wanted to say to to a lot of people, and many of which are like fleeing for the hills, you know, they're moving to Texas, moving to Idaho, moving to South Carolina and Florida, and like all those, you know, all the red states, as people say, the safer states, um, looking at our political climate, looking at our social, you know, economic climate. And I mean, just just all across the board. What I want to say is, is uh, if if you're on the fence of moving or not, I would encourage you to hold the line. If you left, good mm-hmm. for you. Like that's your family decision it's, it's obviously ultimately yours but if you're con- if you're wondering if this place is going to turn around it will this place is absolutely going to going to turn around mm-hmm. um god has been giving us just um just an incredible amount of people and resources um a lot of it is is uh logistical resources a lot of it is legal resources a lot of it is is um very technical resources and we have put together a plan that is given us the ability to actually solve a housing crisis that is in our city that is across this region and i'm not talking about you know vancouver i'm talking about the region and it will spill further but i'll leave it at this for now there is so many beautiful things that are happening if god put a commission this is something i take personally if god put a commission on the church but i'm 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 looking at it as if he is talking to me if God put a commission on us to take to care for the widows and the orphans, then it's my responsibility, and I'm going to I'm going to sound that drum, and I'm going to bring others, and I'm going to get through, and God is going to give us the solution, which we now have, by the way. So, so to some people, it's going to look like in a form of a micro farm, where we're buying large acreages, and as we're building out homes, as our youth is building homes for themselves. Every sixth home, we pull off the line and then we put it onto that micro community. We are building out these sanctuary communities 
where people, moms, I mean, I've met people just across the board, mamas who are living on someone's couch, moms who are living in their cars with their children, moms who are in shelters, can't get out. Like their, their life is like, it would stabilize if they had a safe environment where they weren't constantly fighting for, mm-hmm. fighting for, you know, for, for peace, fighting just to keep themselves, you know, themselves uh, protected. And so this is just one aspect where they get to move into the, move into a home. They get to grow their own food in this, in this community. And I'm not talking like turning people Amish. Like if someone yeah. wants to be one, that's, that's, <laughs> that's on them. But I'm talking where they move into a home, they get to grow their own food and we actually plug them into a business structure where they get to grow a very specific kind of food on top of others that they choose. And this very specific type of food, I'm talking like microgreens to where and and other high value product where they can actually supply them into the local uh, farmers markets yeah. and the restaurant industry that pays high dollars for them. So she not only now lives in a home that she's safe in, she actually can pay for that home, pay it off in less than five years, by the way, in much less than five years. And, and, and she can do it just from her garden. So, so that's just one example where we can reach at the very bottom and then begin to actually hold people up. We have an ability, an, an ability and a plan right now that where we are creating a bridge loan, a, a, we have a bridge loan bank where we are actually able to, for a family, go out, buy a property, go out and then, and then build a home on that property. And, and as they move into this home, I'm going a little bit deep here, as they move into this home, they are able to purchase this home with a significant size of equity because of the value of this home. And I'm talking building timber frame homes. I mean, all the developers and builders are probably like, man, I wonder how he's going to like really nail, nail this. I'm not going to go into a lot of details. I'll talk more at the graduation. So we're able to move them into a home where they now have a significant amount of equity of which they can partner with our bridge loan bank and then help someone else build a home. That equity that gets that gets drawn out from the value of their home because we're charging very minimal prices for the value of the home it still pays the team it still it still gets this process going but now they have an ability to actually provide a bridge loan for someone else and as they're providing a bridge loan for someone else where we can build two more homes because we just got paid back for for what we've invested their bridge loan now now helps us build two more homes and that bridge loan that they lease or that they that they you know put into the flow is now able to through escrow start paying back their their um, their mortgage on their house. So they move into a home, and their mortgage is going to be now covered with the dividends that that are getting paid at twenty percent from their money going into and building others' homes. This is like I mean, I'm, I'm opening up a can of worms here, but what I'm saying is there are strategy there are strategies and there are solutions to actually re- resolve this housing crisis. Some of you might be asking like, where in the world are you? How in the world are you able to, you know, create such massive, you know, profits and, and, and margins? We have a burnt down forest in the state of Oregon that the state is willing to leave out to rot. We as a nonprofit are able to pick up that those logs, mm-hmm. charred, and it seems like useless. We cut them into, into uh, lumber and then train a generation how to care for themselves and how to care for others. In the process, it gives us an ability. We have an engineering firm. We have a legal firm. We have the logistics. Everything is now ready to go, and we're now thrusting forward. So when I'm saying that I'm offering our community, the body of Christ, to step up, pick up their mantle, and let's solve this crisis once and for all, in the meantime, let's give God the glory for giving us the solutions to the very crisis that that we're currently a part of, and we all get to be a part of it. So thanks for allowing me to share. Thank you. Yeah, that's incredible. I, I, I encourage everybody to reach out if they are passionate about what Andre was talking about and if they want to uh, support in any way. Uh, you could, like you said, social media is a good way to reach out. Uh, and I want to, before we close, I wanted to kind of bring it down to Slavic Court really quick. I know we have midterm elections coming up this year, and I mentioned we're going to have a few uh, smaller elections right before that. Um, we, we tell everybody this is probably one of the most important elections of our lifetime. I know everybody says that every, every election season. Um, I know you're very passionate about this topic as well. Uh, could you share a little bit about just uh, how, you, why you think this is also an important election and uh, your, you know, urge of the community to get out and vote uh, like they never have before? To all of you parents who are who are so infuriated with the stuff that goes on in your schools, to you who are who are living under this 
pressure of, of high taxes and no responsibility, no accountability by the people who say, who claim that they represent you, like if you want to see change, there are so many good people that throw their, throw their hat into this ring, into this race, and they're looking and hoping and praying for your vote. They're wanting to get your vote. If you choose to educate yourself through this amazing organization, Slavic Vote, who does exactly that, if you're wondering who to vote for, they'll educate you. And through your votes, you're actually going to be able to turn this dial and really and really bring in the right people who view and, and value and honor family, who, uh, who value this nation, who value you as an individual and, and give you the opportunity to have a choice. Don't just flee. Choose to educate yourself through this these simple methods that are already provided. So so please don't don't feel let down and don't feel like your voice doesn't matter. Don't feel like you don't matter. That's what the enemy wants you to think. And if you realize who who you are and what you're actually capable of with organizations like this, um, it's game over and it's time to see this change. Yeah. Well, do you? Uh, one of the questions that we get all the time, and I'm curious how you answer this question. And we've had this even before we started. Uh, you know, people don't believe in voting. They don't believe that it matters. Uh, and now we have that layer of people who don't trust the voting system anymore. Um, so one of the most common questions we get is, you know, it's rigged, right? How do you, how would you answer somebody that question? If if a if a, a system is rigged, and you choose to not vote, what you do is you're, you're simply making it easier for one. The second thing is, if it is rigged and we and more people are voting, it there's actually people who are standing up right now, entire organizations that are that are funded and and and, and moving with legal action and 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 the finances that follows, who are actually holding up like accountable and doing audits and actually and actually screening. So, the shame that was brought to this nation through. Through stolen elections and whatever other, you know, uh, on on all levels, local and and, and higher, um, don't lose hope because there are good people that have chosen to stand and they're doing and they're doing the right thing. So if you don't vote, you simply just fall and you get demoralized and you let your opponent win. Do the right thing, vote, and then let others do their part and uh, take care of the things that need to happen from the auditor side. I appreciate it. Yaroslav, do you have any, any last questions? That was thought? it. I think I asked you this question last time uh, before at the end of the program is um, what motivates you? What keeps you moving? Because I'm sure you get days where you just want to kind of give up and just <laughs> let it all burn and leave the state. But what keeps you moving and uh, continuing in this in this work? Uh, just in, the, in one word, in a few words. I don't know. <laughs> God. God's the God's a simple answer, but I see so much good that is happening um, that is not that is not evident, but it's about to be on a, on a very big and public scale. Right. Well, we're we're always told, and the, the media always talks about the negative things, but they mm-hmm. don't talk about the good things like you guys are doing and other good organizations. So uh, I agree. Uh, there's a lot of good that's happening, and we just need to uh, look for that and uh, continue with hope. Yes. Thank you for being here. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Visit uh, flashlove.com. Dot org. Dot org. And um, you can f- find more information. Yaroslav, thank you for being here. Thanks you can for find, having me. Thank you. You can find all these programs and all the other previous episodes on our YouTube page, on our website. Um, and reach out if you have any questions. We're happy to help. Uh, like I said, uh, be registered to vote. Make sure you register correctly if you're in Oregon. And uh, uh, make sure you stay active and, and get out there and, and um, make a difference. Thank you very much for listening to Slavic Vote Live. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Slavic Vote Live. I really appreciate you listening to this program. Don't forget to click that like button, subscribe, and share this program with your friends and family. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much and have a great day. Кандидаты. Стремление. Новая программа Slavic Vote Live. Каждую неделю в прямом эфире. Slavic Vote Live. Дает голос.